What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.1 beta 4 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers about a week after the release of beta 3 and just two days after the release of iOS 15.0.2. And in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.1 beta 4, watchOS 8.1 beta 4, tvOS 15.1 beta 4, HomePod OS 15.1 beta 4, and Mac OS Monterey beta 10. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPad OS and what's new in the software, along with when to expect the final release. So let's go ahead and start off with the size of this update. You can see here on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, it came in at 676.4 megabytes. But of course, that size will depend on your device and the version you're coming from, but this was coming from beta three. So let's go ahead and check out the build number here. If we go to our settings, let's go to general about 15.1. We can see here the build number is 19B5068A. So just as we predicted here on the channel, we do have an A build, which means we probably only have the RC to go before the final release. So we'll talk more about that near the end of this video. And if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that has a slight update here as well. It went from 1.15.01 to 1.15.02. So a minor bump there in the modem firmware. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.1 beta four. And the first thing I noticed is that right after my device updated, right after it rebooted, my widgets were not blank. So for every version of iOS 15.1 beforehand, the widgets would show up blank for about 10 to 15 seconds, but I did not notice that one time here on this fourth beta. So that bug appears to be fixed. That was the very first thing I noticed after updating. So good news for you if you were having issues with widgets. Now we also have a change to the notify when left behind feature for the AirPods Pro. So the AirPods just recently got a firmware update that added support for notify when left behind in the Find My application. And it seems that the feature can now be temporarily paused if you have not used your AirPods in a while. So this was pointed out by a Reddit user. You can see here, this is what iOS 15.1 will prompt you with if you've not used your AirPods in a while and you attempt to use the notify when left behind feature. So pretty interesting little change there. And I have been using this feature as well with my AirPods Pro and it's worked just fine, just like it does on the AirTags and any other device. So it's good to finally see this for the AirPods. Now I'm also assuming that we have all or most of the changes that were also included in iOS 15.0.2. So again, that was just recently released and it fixed a ton of bugs that you guys have been talking about for a long time here and that I've personally been facing as well. So some of the big ones are CarPlay. So a lot of people always had issues with CarPlay on 15.1 and iOS 15 in general, and those issues appear to be fixed and they should also be fixed in this fourth beta because like I said, we should have most if not all of the fixes from that recent public release in this latest beta. And if you have the MagSafe wallet that you put on the back of your iPhone, that should now work properly with the Find My application and also the Notify when left behind for that should also work. And then also we have a bug fix for when you save photos from a text message thread and then you delete the text message thread and it deletes it from your photo library as well. That was a bug that should also be addressed here in this latest beta. And then also like we recently talked about, the touch responsiveness bug has also been addressed and fully fixed. So I only had this issue where like you couldn't tap on the first video that you saw, you'd have to go down to the second one or refresh it. There's just a lot of issues with touch responsiveness. I only had that issue in YouTube, but some people were having it in other applications and that appears to be fully fixed here in iOS 15.1 beta four, because again, it was fixed in 15.0.2. And then also in our third beta, we did talk about how the dynamic wallpapers shortcut is working again. So where shortcut would be able to change your wallpaper for you. So before on iOS 15.1, the first couple of betas, you were not able to do that but I can report and confirm that it's been working flawlessly here on the third beta and also on the fourth beta. So if you use that shortcut, it will work just fine. And you also will not be seeing those failed automation uh, notifications in your notification center anymore either. And then as far as SharePlay goes, I have been testing out SharePlay on every single beta. And this fourth beta feels about the same as it did on beta three, which is a good sign you know everything still feels fine it really feels polished and ready for a public release so ios 15 there was just a ton of bugs with SharePlay. It was almost unusable, but now I don't have any issues with it. I did not notice any changes here in this fourth beta with any of the UI elements or anything like that, 
but it's running just fine. So I figured I'd give you guys an update on SharePlay as well, because I know that's still one of the most hyped features in iOS 15. And then also this fourth beta does not affect conversation boost or any other of the AirPods features, unfortunately, because I've told you guys recently that the conversation boost feature just feels like a complete gimmick to me. It really does not do much for me. It sounds worse. It makes everybody sound worse around me when I turn it on. So if I put my AirPod in, and we go here inside of the control center and then go down to the little ear right here. If we tap on that and then go down, you can see conversation boost is right there. Everything looks the same in the control center, but it doesn't perform any better here in this fourth beta, unfortunately. And then also we don't have anything new on the COVID vaccination cards and the wallet application or the digital driver's license. So I know a lot of people always ask about that, but we have not seen any update on that yet. And we still don't have anything new here regarding either one of those here in 15.1 beta four. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes go, you can see here, I do have an issue when I connect my AirPods in the control center. It doesn't always show my AirPods glyph right there for the volume little slider right there so I have a little screen recording here to show you guys so I'm listening to music on my airpods and you can see it's playing and you can see it's the airpods pro right there but the glyph just shows the little speaker with the bluetooth icon and not my airpods pro glyph so that appears to be a bug here in beta 4 I was not seeing that before so I'm sure that will be fixed before the final release. I just wanted to point that out. And then also the storage bug. I know a lot of you guys have issues with the storage bug still. I have not faced that one time, but if you still have that here in 15.1 beta four, let me know down in a comment below. It seems like everybody's having issues where right here next to iPhone, it will show like zero, uh, you know, out of the 256 gigabytes used, it will just be a very inaccurate number up here. So if you still have that, let me know in a comment down below because I can't report on it if I've not faced it one time on any previous version. And then as far as the release notes go, you can see here the release notes are pretty much the same as beta four. We still have issues with the phone application. So it says users might experience loss of audio during calls, followed by the call being dropped in some conditions. And the workaround for that is to just simply toggle on and off airplane mode. And then there's also a known issue with voiceover where it says users might not be able to activate alarms in the clock application. So both of those are still present here in this fourth beta, along with some home issues as well. So just keep that in mind. We are in a beta. You can't expect to see issues like that. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels nice and smooth here on this fourth beta. Of course, I don't really, you know, have anything negative to say when I've only been using the software for about an hour. And that's what the follow up videos on the weekend are for. But you know, no issues, no complaints about 15.1 beta four in terms of the performance. I would assume it's about the same as it was honestly with beta one. I would not really expect any type of major jump, but as far as the Geekbench scores, we can go ahead and do that. So we can see the last one here. We got a 1734 and a 49. 13. So let's see if we can outscore that here with this fourth beta. So you can see we scored a 1748 on the single core and a 4758 on the multi core compared to 1734 and 4913 on beta three. So slightly higher on the single core and lower on the multi core score. But overall, you're not really going to have a bad experience with performance here on 15.1. I really haven't seen anybody talk about major issues in terms of performance. And then as far as the battery life goes, battery life has been great for me, but I did see quite a few people reporting overheating and battery drain issues with the third beta. So I would expect those to be fixed with this a build. And if not, then you should see a fix for that by the final release in a couple of weeks. So I've not had any battery drain issues. And again, it's not, you know, super popular. It's not very widespread, but some people were having that issue and I would expect that to be fixed either in this build or the next one. So let's go ahead and talk about that next build. So today is Wednesday, October 18th. And just as predicted, we were pretty much spot on with our predictions here on the channel because we did say that the fourth beta would be an a build and then the week after we would see the RC and then we would see the final on the final week of October. So it's looking like that's still going to hold up. So I would expect to see the RC build of iOS 15.1 next week. So Apple's event is on Monday the 18th. We could actually see the RC build released after that event. If not, I would expect it on the following two days, either the 19th or the 20th. But I think that the 18th is a good possibility because we could see macOS Monterey RC released on the 18th after that event, since it is going to be an event focused around the Mac. And then again, we should see the final release of iOS 15.1 sometime on the week of the 25th, most likely the 25th through the 27th, somewhere in there. And then we should also see a 15.2 
beta one come out likely on the first week of November. Now we could also see 15.2 beta one come as early as sometime later in this week of the 25th, maybe on the 27th or even the 28th, we could see a 15.2 beta one come out for developers. So that's another thing to look out for in the coming weeks. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 15.1 beta four. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. And if you're looking forward to the Apple event on the 18th, also let me know in a comment down below. I'm really excited for that. We should see the M1X MacBook Pros. I will also be streaming here on the YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check in and say, hey, I will be doing that on the 18th. So just keep that in mind and make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that live stream. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.